My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike and kit tester for over 25 years. And today, this is the tech talk around on Trek's brand new Fuel EX. An old friend, but in a totally new configuration. So there's a lot to talk about. So first up, the figures. 140 mil rear travel, 150 mil front travel. So that's up 10 mil on the previous bike. In terms of geometry, it's 20 mil longer on average in reach across all sizes. So this medium large is now 470 mil long. It's also slacker. So it comes set up in this 64.5 degree uh, low configuration, which means that the little mino chip on the back there is in the low position although you can move it to a high position which gives you a 65 degree head angle and that changes bb height from 338 as i've measured it here to 346 in the higher position however you can now swap the upper and lower headset cups to adjust that by up to a degree so the full geometry potential is now between 63.5 degree head angle and 66 but unlike some bikes where you can just do it in the field that does involve actually fully taking out taping aligning and repressing the lower headset cup so it's not something you're on you're going to be doing in a hurry or just on trail side in terms of the other numbers seat tube angles are much steeper two degrees on average across the range which spreads from 78.6 on the smaller sizes up to 76 on the xl this medium large get to 77.5 so properly steep pushed forward centered on the bike climbing position and just general handling position you've got size specific effective chainstay length although the actual chainstays don't change in terms of length so they can be swapped between each size or between alloy and carbon bikes if you need a repair in a hurry they actually change the position of the chainstay in the frame so on this medium large it's a 440 mil rear chain effective chainstay length and you can see that still gives plenty of space around this 2.5 inch rear bontrager tire and then as you can see much shorter seat tubes so 420 mil and they've increased the diameter now to 34.9 so you're getting that really stout shaft on uh, in this case a reverb axis post because this is a uh, top of the line 9.9 .9 axis bike but we'll go into spec in a minute but what this does is mean that the dropper post is a lot stiffer and won't flex as much when it's at full extension moving up to the cockpit you've got this race shop limited all-in-one full carbon bar with a 45 mil effective stem length and a massive 820 mil width i've just rolled down to the photo spot here and it feels like a proper ape hanger tons of leverage although i reckon quite a few people are going to want to trim those down and finally let's talk about wheel size nearly all the bikes are 29er but small comes in either 29er or 27.5 option and extra small is only available in 27.5 option and you can run all bikes in mullet now so 29 er front 27.5 rear by adjusting that mino link and because you've got extra small two different small and all the way up to XXL in the alloy bikes and XL in the carbon bikes. That means a potential full size range of eight sizes in the alloy bikes. And it gives you this absolute Goldilocks medium large size in the middle. So many people seem like they find a sweet spot fit on a medium large Trek. I'm amazed more bike companies don't offer this kind of sizing. But, you know, certainly having that vast variety of sizes is a real bonus when you're looking at Trek bikes. Also, all these bikes, all the Fuel EXs now come with a lifetime warranty for the original owner and three years warranty for the second owner as long as they've got full paperwork saying where they got it from. Frame weight is 3.4 kilos for the medium frame set in the OCLV mounting carbon format uh, and that includes that Flotex rear shock or 4.6 kilos in the alloy version. And complete bike weight without pedals, but with the little wallet in the down tube is 14.59 kilos. So we've talked about the figures. Let's have a look at the features because there is a lot going on. We've already talked about that adjustable uh, head angle set up with the switchable cups. 
incidentally you don't get those provided with the frame or the bike you have to buy those extra but as you can see no more knock block there's no more uh steering limiter on the uh trek fuel EXs. they kind of opened it up last uh on the last model so you got more steering lock but now they've completely got rid of it and while we're up here let's see if this comes out it's a bit stiff there we go we have a neat little Bontrager micro tool with a chain device on the end and uh, all your essential Torx keys, Allen keys, and a uh, flathead screwdriver in there. That just slides into that little press fit there. And then moving down the frame, we have bottle compatibility on all frame sizes. It does vary depending on uh, which frame size you're talking about, so I'll detail those below. And underneath, you have full internal storage. So got a tube in there, and that's my Bontrager pouch for tools, spares, CO2 cartridge, etc. Uh, heading up towards the head tube. Uh, I mean, I have to say it is a little bit cramped because of the way the uh, frame shrinks down there. So it works best if you take the tube out, unless you're using a super light tube. And why would you want to do that? And if you look up close in here, and if you can see there, you've got the uh, braided internal carbon lines which is where all the internal controls run through. So your rear brake and your rear shifter lines, uh, if you've got a wired uh, gearing set up, all run through those. You can actually see it there on that, uh, in the little carbon weave inside that uh, unused, because this is an Axis wireless bike uh, port there. So uh, yeah, as soon as you put the cable in or the hose in, it just travels all the way through the bike and then pops out where you want it to. Although, as you can see, it is external on the rear chain stay there. Big changes afoot in the midsection here, not least that Trek have finally got rid of their proprietary uh, reactive shock technology. I mean, that's been going for, God, several generations of the Fuel EX. Uh, it was originally a collaboration with Penske Motor Racing, but now not only is it a standard shock, well, it's a uh, trunnion top shock, in 185 mil length with a 55 mil stroke but they've deliberately worked on the clearances including this scoop out here to make sure you can fit pretty much any shock you want in there uh obviously works with rock shocks and fox but it works with dvo ext push although there are limits on some sizes pretty much any shock that you want to potentially fit in your trek fuel ex is going to sit within that space without fouling anything and you now have a little chip i mean obviously this whole bottom section here is new and used to just uh, sit directly into the frame but this little bridge here allows them to use this less and more chip here and that doesn't just change the shock rate it also changes the progression of the shock and the idea is is if you shift it backwards you get more kind of end stroke resistance which either works if you want a more just a more progressive more supportive feel from the air shock you're already getting or it means it'll work better with a coil shock as well so they're fully open to the possibility of you running a coil shock on this bike and going back to the front end although it comes 150 mil as standard it's also cleared to run 160 mil forks and that includes longer axle to crown length forks like rockshock zeb and fox 38 Moving backwards along the bike, we've already talked about the uh, Mino Hilo chip there. We've talked about the fact that the chainstay, uh, effective chainstay lengths change slightly on different models. But just like on nice little details there, like this little sprung rubber protector that stops as much rubbish going in between the gap in the frame there. You've got metal plate there to gauge against chain gouging. You've got up and under rubber protection on the chainstay and on the uh, inner chainstay there to keep things quiet, keep your paint safe. You've got Trek's very well proven uh, ABP. Concentric rear pivot point there. So rather than having a chainstay pivot or a seat stay pivot, the axle is actually the center of the rear suspension as well. Then moving up to the down tube, you have a full length optional dual density protective guard so obviously the fact it goes all the way up doesn't just protect it from flying rocks off the front wheel it also means if you're chucking it over the back of a pickup truck uh usa or canadian style then it's going to be protecting that, that oclv mountain carbon frame underneath 
but if you want to save a little bit of weight you can obviously do without that and uh, like put your uh, frame protection in the hands of the gods and just poking in under here it's also got mounts to fit a isc g5 rated chain guide on there and in properly good news for high mileage long-term users trek fuel x now gets a threaded bottom bracket not some nasty creaky squeaky press fits situation and the great news is apart from the fuel ex5 which is a bit of a red herring as the frame is basically a carryover from uh, the previous model every bike alloy and carbon from the fuel ex7 upwards to the fuel ex 9.9 xx1 axis which is this bike here comes with all those same frame features so alloy or carbon that you get everything i've just talked you through there so that's the figures and the features talked about let's go around the kit on this flagship fuel ex 9.9 xx1 axis model starting the front you have fox 36 factory grip 2 damper exactly the one you'd want in this bike 150 mil travel you have got bontrager's line pro uh carbon wheels that's 29 mil internal 27 mil depth and covered by their own carbon care warranty program you have bontrager's se5 team issue uh tires as you'd hope tubeless ready and basically if i said they were bontrager's equivalent to the maxis dhr if not quite as grippy and a little bit quicker i think you'd know where we were going with those Moving up to the bars, we have this amazing RSL uh, Race Shop Limited all-in-one carbon bar. Like I say, hugely wide, 820 mil wide, but you can see, uh, although this kind of thing generally makes it a right pain to fit lights and GPSs too, you have this little insert here where you can screw in what Trek Bontrager call blender kits so you can add uh, all sorts of mounting kits for lights uh, gopros uh, whatever you you would normally put on your bars moving out to the ends we've got code rsc levers and then we have xx1 shifter on that side and then we have the reverb axis wireless shifter on that side so good to see unlike uh, the high tower that i looked at recently you are getting proper xx1 throughout dropping down to the shock here you've got again fox factory equipment flotex shock uh, so that means you've got low speed compression and low speed rebound adjustment and then of course you've got that uh, leverage leverage and progression adjustment on that little chip at the bottom there you've got xx1 super light carbon chain set i'm not to be honest, I'm not quite sure why you want the fully hollow, uh, no alloy armature, extra light crank on here, not the slightly tougher X01, but, you know, it saves a few grams, and like I say, if you want XX1, you're getting all of it here, and then again, at the back, you're getting XX1 rear mech, which means you get that carbon cage on there, so... Again, uh, yes, you're saving a few gam grams, but you are going to have to need to be a little more careful about where you put that rear wheel on the back of the bike, uh, which, you know, when you're talking about a bike that's designed to take a coil shock and, you know, it's running 2.5 tyres and an 820 mil bar, putting a super light cross-country race rear mech on, anyway, anyway, it's a flagship bike, let them go. And then they're all linked together with this beautiful oil can finish chain and rear cassette and then obviously on the far side we've got code rsc brakes rear with a 180 mil rotor and then up front with a 200 mil completing the uh, axis wireless setup we've got this reverb axis post and a bontrager arvada elite austinite uh saddle and austinite is presumably something to do with uh steve austin the six million dollar man because apparently these are lighter and tougher rails than hollow titanium uh, if you take Trek's word for it. So, there you go. That is 11,750 quid's worth of bike. Yeah, just let, let that sink in for a minute. So, uh, nearly £2,000 more expensive than that Hightower X01 Axis bike I reviewed recently. And... 1750 more than the specialized stump jumper evo s works uh with a similar level of kit and 
if you do the maths, it's actually £1,200 more expensive if you buy the complete bike than if you bought all these separate parts at full retail. But to be fair to Trek, that's the case with a lot of flagship bikes and it's a reflection that sometimes the OEM pricing is actually steeper than what you'll currently pay aftermarket because of supply chain issues. And if unsurprisingly you can't quite stretch to uh, nearly £12,000 for this model, you'll be pleased to know that the range actually starts at 3300 and there are two alloy frame bikes and then five uh, carbon frame bikes, uh, including, including two wireless axis models. That's a GX and this XX1 here and an XT model and an XTR model. So whether your preference is with a SRAM or with Shimano, they've got you pretty well covered. So that's the figures, the features and the tech spec done. Now it's time for the exciting bit. I'm going to jump on the bike and take it round my favourite test trails here at Stainburn Trail Centre. So that's going to be a separate edit. So for now, I just need to say thank you very much to Trek for sending me the bike uh, prior to the launch. Massive thanks to Zero Cycling UK, to PEs and Crud for sponsoring the channel, and to my awesome Patreon subscribers who pledge a small monthly amount for early, exclusive, ad-free edits and kind of extra buying uh, tech advice, kind of a bike mountain bike personal shopper basis. So. If you really like what I'm doing on the channel and want to help make it grow in a really, really welcome way, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. But if you're not one of my 25,000 subscribers already, make sure you click to subscribe, click for notifications so you know when the next videos come up, and please give this video a thumbs up, because if you've made it this far, it can't have been that bad, and the more likes I get, the more YouTube will share the channel. But the best way for this channel to grow, as always, is your recommendation. So if you have enjoyed it, tell your mates about it. And if you haven't, well, crack on in the comments and tell me what I can do better or if I've missed any things that you want answered on this bike. But I'm not wasting any more time because uh, the clouds are rolling in. And frankly, this bike looks proper tasty. So I want to jump on and see just how well it goes. Best watch that one then.